The Lord has called out to man about his perfect kingdom with the desire that we will turn away from the way of sin and that we will live holy and righteously through faith in his only begotten son. As you have heard me say before, the Lord has always desired to dwell with us. He's always desired to dwell with mankind eternally. And I tell you today that he still desires to dwell with all of us eternally. We see this in our lesson today, where in the 13th verse, we are told that Jesus, he called to himself those that he wanted. This scripture is speaking of the closest disciples, the 12 disciples that closely followed Jesus throughout his earthly ministry. So what did Jesus, what did he call on the 12 for? Well, we're told in the 14th and in the 15th verse that Jesus, he called the 12 so that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. So the 12, I want you to understand, they were handpicked by Jesus for a purpose and for a reason. The disciples, I want you to understand that they were called to follow. They were called to pay attention to Jesus. They were called to pay attention to his every word. They were called to pay attention to his actions because one day it will be on them they would have to go out into the world and they would have to share the good news with all of those that were around them. And so we'll see in the next couple of verses here in the 16th and the 17th verse, we'll see where the first of the disciples that were called to be of the 12 that closely followed Jesus was Simon, also known as Cephas, also known as Peter. Now in Matthew's gospel, we are told that Jesus that he met both Peter and his brother Andrew as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, where they had been fishing. Both were fishermen. We are told in scripture in the fifth chapter of Luke's gospel and the second and the fourth verse, we're told a bit more detail where Jesus, he had actually gotten on to Peter's boat and he had began to teach. He had began to teach to a multitude while both Peter and Andrew, they were away from their boat. They were cleaning their nets from having just finished fishing. Now, myself, I personally, I kind of chuckle at this picture because I'm thinking of Peter as I read through this scripture. I, I chuckle at this scene because of Peter's personality. Peter, he was one who was outspoken. And so I can only imagine his face when he had returned back to his boat and when he had saw that there was a man on his boat who he did not know, who was on his boat teaching to a multitude that was gathered around his boat. Now, Peter, he eventually went on and got into the boat and he did as Jesus had asked him to do. He went further out to sea so that Jesus could teach the multitude. Now, as we continue on here in the 16th and in the 17th verse of our lesson, we are then told that James and John, the sons of Zebedee, that they were called to follow Christ. We are even given a nickname that we don't find elsewhere in scripture for the two brothers that Jesus had for them, where he called them the sons of thunder. Now, what a, what a cool nickname that is, the sons of thunder. Now, with a nickname like that, you can imagine that both of the brothers, they must have been very charismatic people, especially in comparison to the other disciples not named Peter. John, we know he was younger than Peter. And as we see throughout scripture, he was pretty well known. If you think about it, going to when Jesus was arrested and put on trial in the courtyard, John, he had no problem entering into the courtyard of the high priest. He was well known, whereas Peter, he was a bit afraid to enter into the courtyard. John, again, he and his brother, I believe that they were very charismatic. I believe that they were very well-known people and they weren't afraid. They, they had no, essentially they had no fear as they would move about letting the world know about the Lord. James, he lost his life because he was unafraid to let the world know about the Lord. 
Now, the rest of the 12, they are shared with us there in the 18th and in the 19th verse. Including within that 12, in those two verses, we see a mention of Iscariot. It's Judas Iscariot was, again, he was called to follow Jesus. As we know, he would eventually go on to betray Jesus. As he went to the garden, he kissed Jesus on the cheek, showing the those who would arrest Jesus, showing him who exactly he was. Now, something that I always say about the 12 that I genuinely believe is that the 12, in some manner, they represented all kinds of characters that are present in our world today. As I mentioned about Peter, Peter, he was a boastful man. He was ego driven before he humbled himself. James and John, again, being very charismatic people, they were so charismatic that at one point in time, they went to Jesus as they desired to sit at the hand, sit at his left and sit one at his right hand. Thomas, even though he's not necessarily spoken of and focused in our scripture today, Thomas, we know he was a doubter. And again, Iscariot was one that walked with Jesus for a little bit, but he wasn't of genuine faith. He was one that was actually absent of faith and he would go on to betray Jesus. I believe, and I always say this about the 12, that there is always something that we can learn from them and that we should always, we should always pay them very close attention in the words that they said and in their actions, in their actions, most importantly, as well. Now, as our lesson skips over to the sixth chapter of Mara's gospel, we'll see here in the sixth and in the seventh verse where Jesus, he went about in a circuit. He went about in a circuit teaching the good news with the disciples again paying close attention to his every word. Jesus, he called the twelve then to send them out on their first mission. They were sent out two by two, we're told in scripture, and that they were then given power by Jesus over unclean spirits as well when they went out. So again, let's be very clear about this notion here. The power that the disciples received over the unclean spirits, it was a gift that was given to them by Christ himself. In both Matthew and in Luke's Gospels, it is explained to us that the disciples, they were sent out to preach the kingdom of God. They were sent out to heal the sick. The sick, I want you to understand, to be clear here, were those who were in not just poor health physically, but those who are in poor health mentally, emotionally, and those who are in poor health spiritually as well. Without receiving this power from Christ, the disciples, they wouldn't have been able to go out and do anything. They would not have had power to go out and to share the message of the kingdom of God. And they certainly would not have had the power to heal those that were sick physically mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to the eighth and the ninth verse here in this sixth chapter, because for me, this is the meat of our Sunday school lesson for today. I want you to pay attention to how Jesus sent out the disciples. Jesus, he told the disciples to not take anything for the journey except for a staff and the sandals that they wore on their feet. They weren't supposed to take a bag, they weren't supposed to take bread, nor was they supposed to take copper in their money belt. So I ask you, do you have any thoughts as to why Jesus gave them this command to not carry those things with them? The reason why Jesus gave them this command is because the disciples, they would need to learn to lean on the Lord. They would need to learn to lean on the Lord rather than leaning on and depending on the world, especially when it came to ministering the good news with all of those that were around them. Honestly, I, I say to you that this is a lesson that all of us as believers, we need to learn it today. We need to learn to lean on. We need to learn to depend on the Lord, especially again, all of us that have confessed to believe in Christ. As I have preached recently, many of us, we have lost our soul because we rather live in submission to the world than live in submission, than live in obedience to the will and to the way of God. 
on that same note, along those same lines, in the next couple of verses here, Jesus, he touches on another important topic for us to understand when it comes to ministering and sharing the good news with all of those that are around us. Is again, how are we to go about sharing the gospel? Jesus, he essentially tells us that we should always go out in a manner of peace. We should always move in a manner of peace, even in those times when one may reject the good news of God. Now, that thought can be very difficult for some of us to understand. You see, something that often happens is that believers, they don't know how to handle when someone rejects the good news. Some of us, we, we have a nasty habit of getting combative when that's not how Jesus wants us to respond. Jesus, he told the disciples, he told them to shake off the dust from under their feet. In other words, keep it moving. Keep it moving when one rejects the good news as a testimony. It stands as a testimony, not of yourself. It stands as a testimony against them. So don't take that rejection. Don't take it personally. Because I want you to understand, you aren't the one that is being rejected. God, his good news, and his kingdom, that is what is being rejected. Yes, I know many of us, we want to fight for the Lord. But God, I want you to understand, God hasn't called on any of us to do that. God has only commanded, he's only commissioned us to encourage and to persuade others that are around us by sharing the good news. Nothing more or nothing less than that. And so as we come to a close for our lesson this week, we'll see that the disciples, they did just as Jesus commanded. And what scripture shows us is that the disciples, they were successful on their journey. They cast out many demons, they anointed many with oil, and they healed those that were sick. I want you to understand today that we have a good word. We have the good news to share with all of those that are around us. Let us not lean on our own wisdom in order to share the good news with all of those that are around us. You see, if you do that, you won't accomplish anything. Lean on the Lord, lean and depend on the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will guide you in sharing the message of salvation. And again, when we do this, when we lean on the Lord, you and I, we will have great success in ministering and sharing his good news. Mm -hmm.